Welcome back to A Drink With Crazy and thank you guys so much for checking out the channel. Today we're talking about whether or not 4K60 on consoles or just even in general is worth it. Is the gaming industry ready for 4K60? Is the or are they hardware ready? Well, is their hardware ready? Are their dev teams ready? Or have we not maxed out 1080? Let's get into that discussion right now. And if you like what we're doing, don't forget to go down below and subscribe and ring that notification bell. Keep in mind, we're looking at our analytics right now and only 50% of the people who are checking us out are actually subscribed to the channel. So it would be wonderful if you would go down below and do that. And without any further ado, let's get into the conversation of whether or not the world is ready for 4K60 gaming. We'll see, here we go. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, make sure you ring that notification bell, and make sure to share this with everyone you know to help us beat that massive YouTube algorithm. So, I know you and I have been talking about for the last couple days, whether or not it's actually worth it from a visual sense to actually chase after 4K60 right now, because I'm sorry, I've been looking at a lot of games, and obviously, I am now going through, you just went through Ghost of Tsushima, mm -hmm. which, I mean, I granted, I'd love to see that at 4K with HDR. Right. But... I don't know. I look at how good that game looks. I look at the technical uh, achievements of like The Last of Us 2 or Red Dead Redemption 2. Mm -hmm. And these are all native 1080p games. Their assets are designed around 1080. Yeah. They can upscale to, four, uh, to 4K, but the oftentimes performance is a big, big hit well, when, when, you, when you do that. And so I'm curious whether we're chasing the wrong thing. I mean, you know, last generation, which granted was seven years ago, but with the PS4 and the Xbox One. We couldn't even attain 1080 60 standard. Mm. And now we're going after 4K 60. Well, uh, so so one of the things that kind of brought this up, and I, I, I use a couple of frames of reference here, is obviously we watched the Halo Infinite gameplay. And, right, yeah. And the texturing looked off, and it, and it, and it seemed, and, and now, and that being said, 343 Studios did come out with a couple of. Uh, with a well, a couple of really good blog posts talking about how. Oh no, they've been they've been very transparent. No, three, four, and I, I appreciate no, that a lot. And three four three is is doing a great job with, especially. And you can tell that they care. But but one of the things that we noticed is that it, okay, so four K sixty. So here's one of my frames of reference, right? You right. always see that little uh, that graphic that people do, and they're like, okay, well uh, well seven twenty is here. And then, and because the, they're all showing it in one just picture, right? Yeah. Seven twenties here, and then ten eighties here, and then four K is like, and I actually went off the screen is like here, right? Yeah. And so, and you see that, and so for people who don't understand that it's more pixel density than it is picture size, but yeah, well, exactly, give, but it does give people a really good frame of reference. And so, when you and do then, very highly detailed models, and you can upscale it to four K. Sometimes it can look better, not always, because it depends on the base assets. Absolutely. Well, and but so one of the things, if I may, really uh, yeah, quickly, course, that you course. and I've talked about, because this kind of goes with that other fr that frame of reference, uh, right? Right. Right. I said my two frames of reference. So that little scale that people use, and then obviously understanding is something that you taught me over the years, is that um, uh, you know certain picture size at a certain distance is almost indistinguishable from each other. Yeah, I think they and said most, it's like 10, 15 feet um, on a 36-inch display. You can't tell the difference between, between 720 and 1080, 1080, right? Which is essentially kind of like my living room if we like positioned it long ways, which it used yeah. to be. And so obviously the bigger the screen, the lower the resolution, yeah. the more and, discrepancy you see. So obviously you have a big TV. So 4K and, and, and is so, noticeable on your... And so my... Well, exactly. But I also have... I mean, I got a really good price on it, but I have a 65-inch display. And sitting in this little room... Gotta love sales, man. You're right. Gotta love sales. Yeah. Um, gotta love because that would not have happened oh. otherwise. But <laughs> it's me. one of those things that you really do. And, and, and you actually watched more 4K on my TV. Cause, well, yeah, because he often uh, drags me up to be free babysitting. <laughs> and I saw that that old Matthew Broderick Godzilla movie was available on Netflix in 4K. Yeah. And I was like, "All right, kiddos, you're you're gonna you're gonna see a bit of my childhood, right?" And um, it's not that great a movie, but you know, it was my childhood, and, right? Yeah. And so I'm like, "Yeah, no, you're gonna see this." I actually, look pretty darn good. Well, and th and that was the even thing with that... their old terrible '98 era CGI, yeah. it yeah. actually didn't look well, bad. And, and so that again, my frames of reference here are understanding picture size, understanding, uh, understanding how. Um, the how we won't distinguish between one or the other at a certain right. distance, and that's and then not only that, and the picture size more so is how many PC gamers are playing on like what I have, how many PC gamers or or oh. even console gamers. I, I, really don't, I don't one. I don't know too many PC gamers that actually play on a sixty five to be well, honest. Well, but that but, and that's what I'm saying <laughs> is that is 
do game devs and, and, and Halo Infinite, r the gameplay that they showed, really, really showcased this? Is that do we need to worry about picture size or picture density? I guess would be the better well, it's, frame. It's, it's pixel or do density. we need to worry about? Well, I'm going to say picture. Let's keep it simple. Let's keep it. Oh, okay. You okay. know, let, let let let's keep it simple. Stupid for guys like me because I had to learn all this. I will right? go technical here in a second for those of you who are already at your yeah. Keyboard. No, no. He's um. he, he, yeah. No, this is this <laughs> is the guy. Like he's the guy. He's taught me a lot of this. But what I I I keep it you know simple stupid for me because one of the things that I look at is well if I'm not going to notice a difference uh on on my tv for certain things how are people who are most people are getting about a 26 inch to maybe a 32 inch display well, and, and they're and they're gaming and they're for very PC, close yes. and they're very for close pc yes it's um keep even, in mind i play on a 26 well but even console gamers even console oh, a lot gamers, of them especially college students and uh people of the like high school college students they play in a very similar setup to what i have which is desk monitor yeah. and consoles off to the side so when you sit back it's basically and the TV would be, and, and that's the thing is, my question is, is is not just the picture density, but the idea that Halo Infinite really, really did highlight this is that are we going to sacrifice image quality for image density? Exactly, and, and that's get, where I'm going. And let let's let yeah, you take so, this from here. And so when you want to get into the technicals on this, and uh, I'll try and explain it as the best I can for those of you who don't know, and for those of you who do, just bear with me. Um, a lot of what we call image quality is going to be things like shaders, bump mapping, tessellation, um, obviously texturing, just, texturing just the basic one textures. The Texture um, is something that... Lighting, lighting, um, static versus dynamic versus ray traced versus, you know... If I may interject real quick yeah. for the simple stupid guys like myself. Right. I noticed textures and I can notice lighting. Those are two things that anybody... Well, what you would call textures is actually a hodgepodge of a bunch of different things, right? So you get the wireframe, mm -hmm. yep. then you put the texture on it. So let's take a Chief's Gauntlet, yes. like what we see in that footage, right? And so what that will be is it'll be a wireframe of his hand, which is then overlaid with a texture, which will be kind of the rough look of his armor, right? Yep. Then you overlay with a detail texture. So there's probably like four or five different textures on his... Yes. On his gauntlet, if not more, I don't know if that's gone up since then, but these are all very high resolution. All textures by default in the modern era are generally pretty high resolution. Mm -hmm. And so when you take that and then you apply the dynamic lighting and the shading and all that into it, and then you apply tessellation, which tessellation is an approximate 3D rendering where it actually gives surface values to three-dimensional objects. So, for example, if I may, you see uh, your keyboard there. You see how the buttons are a little raised? And yeah. you see how they raise up like that? Well, tessellation simulates that effect in a what is essentially a... A 2D object. Exactly. And so one of the first games to do that was actually Alien vs. Predator, the 2010. Oh, I, I have not heard good things about that. People are very negative about <laughs> it, but actually, I don't hate the game. I actually quite like the game. If you're willing to kind of turn your brain off and play an AVP game, <laughs> uh, you know what you signed up oh, for. Oh, you do that. But, you, but, but uh, that's one thing. If you're a super fan of something, I and, and I know how I love, highly I critical alien. you are, I know how I highly critical. But you'll turn. But no. But, but um, that's one of the things that I will notice. What you just talked about is that raised, that raised platform, and 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 especially and in all the of that has to be rendered individually. So all of that it has to be a bump map on top of the 3D objects Here, that take it, take that it, and just raise it. Show the camera. Yeah, that raise it, and they all render this. And this is probably not the best example because it's a little hard to show up on screen. It's just the best I got. Um, you know, obviously, you can see our little chief here, and you can see a lot of the detail on his armor and all that. All that would be tessellated and bump mapped and shaded and whatnot in the final game. And what I'm seeing out of the Halo Infinite is a lot of that seems very flat. Well, and and there, almost there like is... it's from that 360 era because bump mapping and tessellation are two different things. They both try and achieve the same result. Well, and and, and they're well, often used in combination. And and one of the things that I that really got me thinking about this is just the, so mm. the 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 Excuse engine me. that they specifically sucker punch specifically designed for ghost of tsushima yes and the, this engine was specifically designed to get that draw distance yes and that's how you get those vistas the that everybody fact talks of the about. matter is is the game that ghost of tsushima does not have the best coloration contrast sharpness or any of that actually its coloration stuff. is quite good it's very vibrant well, no, no, um, no, no, and it's very, but but hold on oh because it because it, it doesn't have the best coloration because a lot of it's kind of solid colors here contrasted by solid colors here however 
because they went a step further with the 1080 technology and decided to take this 1080 and really build an engine to get that draw distance so that way this this color right here and this color right here were like this because of that mm. you started to notice just a depth of field that well, that's, I, that's I, another... I will say this i i've not seen a depth of field that's that actually that's good. actually that's actually another trick and uh no and no and you're right it is what, what we no. call depth of field that ability to because obviously, you know, well, it's all two dimensional. 3D is an it's an optical illusion. It's mm -hmm. a 2D image that is being uh, rendered in such a way to trick our eye. Yes, um, hundred percent. No, and I totally no, totally submit and, to that. And, yeah. and so, um, what you saw, especially um, back in the mid two thousands, the mid to late two thousands, was a technique called uh, screen a screen space ambient occlusion. What that did is it caused the shadows and the lighting to interact slightly differently to start getting that depth of field. Depth of field is not. Which and is so part that, of the reason that like Halo Two and now Halo we've Three look so good. And I don't forget, I forget what HBAO stands for, but it's the next up, and uh, then you have HBAO Plus, and then I th there might even be another one now. And then obviously you get ray traced lighting in there. That's where you start to get like ray those, tracing. That's where I you start would, to get I those. I want to see Ghost of Tsushima with ray tracing. Um, that if, would. just because uh, RDR Two had its own uh, Rockstar just did their own ray tracing. They didn't rely on GPU accelerated like because uh, right. Nvidia does a yeah, lot yeah, of it yeah, now. Yeah. I, yeah. But their engine pulled it off on its own. It's a resource hog. But if you're willing to cap it at thirty like I am, it looks really good. Um, and then you get all those soft shadows and this indirect and it's realistically and uh, the way the light works is supposed to react similar to the way the photons work in our mm -hmm. actual world. And then you look again at like what Halo Infinite did and the lighting seems very static. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry to keep using that as an example, but I know they're shooting for 4K60 with this. Mm -hmm. And I don't see it's worth I'm sorry, the anniversary edition looked better. In a lot of ways, Halo 3 had a more vibrant, better depth of field. They actually tried to, they actually did HDR back before HDR was a well, thing. And, and, they just did it internally in the engine as opposed to display. And, I, and, and again, that the one thing that I'm, I'm wondering is are they going to sacrifice picture density? And I'm, I'm very, it, it's image quality. I, I'm it's, saying, it's, it's, it's I'm image saying, quality. I, I'm saying the picture. more detailed the frame, the more detailed the texture, the well, more no. tessellation, the more shaders, and the better lighting quality you get, the more fidelity to but the image. And so if, after seeing a game like ghost of Tsushima, and if I were to compare ghost of Tsushima next to the halo infinite stuff, which we might actually even, uh, Throw that up. You know what? We'll we'll throw that up in this because uh, I, I know a way to do that. We'll we'll throw that up in this video. Okay. Like right here, right here. We'll do the Halo Infinite gameplay versus uh, the uh, Ghost of Tsushima. Yeah. You, so Halo Infinite Ghost of Tsushima. Yeah, yeah, yo, yo. But there's there's such a depth to one at 1080 30, and the other at 4K 60, or and even so, 1080 60. You just don't get. And I and I'm wondering. Are they going to sacrifice the next evolution in image quality for 4K 60? And so this is where and that's I'm, that's my concern. I'm not saying they're going to do it. Fidelity is getting to the point where it's starting to get diminishing returns, right? So they got to chase something else. And 4K 60 is the next big buzzword that you can do. It, it ties into graphics, even though it's display, not graphics, because the graphics are internal, yeah. displays external. It's output. Light bulb. Light right. bulb. Sorry, light bulb moment. All right. Don't know how this happened, but it did. I'll give us a short version. <laughs> the, no, 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 no. It's, this is actually a very short version because it's a light bulb moment. Yeah. You don't, you don't get long thought in light bulb. But my light bulb moment just now was, what if a game dead came out and said, hey, guys, we get it. 4K60. Everybody wants 4K60. But what if we told you that 1080 plus... We'll just call it just a buzzword, right? Let's use the buzzwords because buzz, you said buzzword. But what if we told you our 1080 plus game looks better than that 4K game? Uh, yeah, just call it 2.7. We already have that. No. True 1080. But they're using a buzzword because buzzwords in marketing. Oh, well, yeah. So we're actually using true 1080. Don't feed the but trolls. But they're just <laughs> maxing out the 1080. Because, again, well, I that's always all, yeah, go. That's all you have to do. And I'm sorry. I mean. When I look at something as uh, graphically impressive as The Last of Us 2, I mean, when you think about it, it's running on seven-year-old hardware, and you look at how good that game looks, and the detail, and the animations, and the facial, and the, the way the eyes look, and it doesn't quite get that uncanny valley. They do some tricks with the eyes to keep it from doing that. I don't know. Quite. I'm very glad that that... It's, it's, it's where they position them, actually. Yeah, and... Um, 
But anyway, it's all very, very good. And what I just want to see is that with slightly better texturing, slightly better draw distance at 1080 60. That's all I want. Dude, if if The Last of Us 2 would have had the draw distance that Ghost of Tsushima had. And true draw distance. I know, I know the uh, old tricks of you essentially have a background image that slowly transforms into a 3D image. As you get closer, I, I trust me, I'm aware of those tricks. Or you could pull a uh, Horizon Zero Dawn where it actually only renders the cone of your vision. And it just renders it as you turn. Just, no, it's all stored but, in RAM. But, but um, if The Last of Us 2 would have had the draw distance, which was a specifically designed engine by Sucker Punch for Ghost for, of For getting those we, vistas. I mean, and, Ghost, yeah, and, and here's the thing. Draw is, distance. I, I think people would have actually gotten motion sickness you and i almost did playing the last of us two in a specific scene where we're on a skyscraper uh, not not motion sickness vertigo yeah actually oh that's right yeah, yeah. The, well that's what vertigo is is vertigo well is it's it's uh, for it's it's that you know matt inner ear matt, thing yeah i have inner ear thing yeah i know well I so have. no trust me i know what i'm talking about but well, no but i, but, I get but, vertigo getting out of my bed because i can't see um well that's also because there's a but actually no that's actually a really good example here Let's use that. Yeah. It is a, if you, if you're sitting in your chair playing and you're seeing something that your brain says, oh, holy crap, this is, but you're sitting in a chair and you're, you're, again, your ears are not detect the fluid in your ears aren't detecting the change in motion. That's when you start to hit that vertigo. That's when you start to get motion sickness. And that's what and, causes and all the issues with the VR headsets, like the Oculus and the, or exactly, the PlayStation VRs. It's sound, yeah, it's, it's, because, it's you know, sensory deprivation. Well, because you basically you put on a big, tight pair of uh, noise-canceling headphones and then a screen really close to your eyes. And then it tells your brain by sound and by vision that I'm moving at this speed, but your See, body doesn't experience and, the G-forces. And, and I think that... Uh, going back to my original argument, we maxed out 720p when we could. We have not maxed out At the out end of the PS3, 360R, yeah. We've not maxed out 1080. And I think that this jump, I think that we are going to see some sacrificial lambs here going for the 4K60 And I think Halo generation. is the first one. That's why I'm being so critical of it is because I want Microsoft, and I do mean Microsoft, mm -hmm. to recognize that we need better looking games or at least as good looking games Well, and the that run better. I want stability, 60, and I'm fine with 1080. Let's leave 4K for later. I don't, you can sound off in the comments. I don't even know how many people outside of this dude who found his first steel that have a 4K display. Well, and that being said, I mean, my 4K, even my, folks my, don't. my 4K display isn't even really the best. Yeah. I mean, and, and I mean, don't get me wrong. It's nice. Like we got, we got a great steel on it. And it was just one of the, well, and pre predominantly because uh, up until I had this TV, I was buying the really old school, like rear projection screens. Never again. He told me flat no. out, he wouldn't help me move. It's no. like, it took two vehicles to get the, the one TV. Two vehicles, to, three hours and a lot of weight. No, uh, five hours. It was, it was that, that was a, a good portion of the day, but never but again. The, the, the issue is that I'm looking at is these games that, don't have that depth and that 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 feel that, that would be that, suck you in. That'd be that ambient occlusion, that shading, that lighting, the tessellation, the base textures, bump mapping, um, draw distance is obviously a big one. Uh, I'm sorry, Ghost. And to, you and, can and see this, and I I'm sorry, I'm going to do it again. Halo Infinite, the way the grass gets rendered as they go, and old build, sure, not final. I understand all of this, and. New Halo game. Of course, I'm interested in it, but I don't want them sacrificing it on the altar of 4K60 when I don't think it's worth it. Not if that's what we have no, to do. I, I think that I think that what we need to do is these console generations need to say we're going to do a 1080 ultimate. Because if you had, and it would be a certain game dev that would come out, a certain game dev would say, oh yeah, no, 4K60 is okay. But guess what? We didn't waste our time on that. You know what we wanted to do? 1080 ultimate why because we are pushing 1080 to a graphical level that you have not seen before and i think if a game dev did that it would sell more well, let's be honest it'd be a publisher but um it would sell more games whatever game that is because they would say we're taking the technology and we're maxing it out and that's my problem is i do not i'm not, feel, I'm not convinced on the 1080 i would rather ultimate have thing. Just not. no no you're not convinced on the naming, but you are convinced on, I would rather have somebody come out and say, you're going to get this picture quality with 1080 
versus 1080 60. Because let's versus, say 60 is good versus their 4K 60. Or you know what? Do them even better. 1080 120 at this image quality versus 4K 60 at this image quality. There you go. And that's and that's the thing is, are they sacrificing our image immersion to just make a more to make a you know where I'm coming from with this because uh-huh. I gave my example in the beginning. Yeah. To make just a bigger picture. Well, that's all it is. I mean, obviously, as we've talked about, it's just the number of pixels on screen. And so if you have high quality assets that are being rendered at that display image, that pixel quality, then it all looks really good. But if you have really low tier assets or really basic assets because you're trying to hit a frame rate that because the computer has to render each of those pixels. And when you overload it like that, you have to sacrifice a lot of fidelity to get it to run at a smooth frame rate. I mean, some of the top GPUs now can't do it, and you're telling me a console can do it? Now, that sounds elitist, but it's because of the way they're designed. Obviously, optimization on a console is much more streamlined. But it's well known that PC advances faster because you have so many dedicated industries for it. Well, Nvidia, and, and AMD, that's, no, and that's true. Intel. And, 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 but like I said, I just I am so concerned that we're going it's to expensive, start... expensive, though. I'm so concerned that we're going to start losing out on that that beautiful picture quality it's a bouncing to get, act simply to get a bigger picture it's, and I'm, I'm being reductive here it's oh, not I, a bigger picture but that's Just, what i'm worried about are we going to lose our beautiful pictures our beautiful games our beautiful i the said last this, of us too we may not have liked the last of us too but damn it if it, it is a benchmark beautiful. that game was beautiful it's a benchmark i'm sorry ghost of tsushima if i go to play it on 4k 60 am i going to lose that picture that I took so many screenshots of, are you going to lose when you go do RDR2 on 4K60 again? Well, no, because they actually have the assets. And honestly, all you're doing at that point is upscaling. It might get slightly crisper, but you probably wouldn't notice that big a difference. Well, but but my question is, is what are we losing by these game developers not recognizing and that's, picture that's, quality versus picture size? That, that's the main focal point is stop sacrificing detail to achieve this when I don't think it's necessary. 1080 looks fine. Most and people I'd much are ra- playing on monitors that require 4K. I'm sorry. Most people are playing on monitors that are about meh. You don't need 4K on that. What you do need is damn good 1080 on that. At 60 FPS. Or 120. We missed it last generation with the PS4 and the Xbox One. And I said even a year ago or two years ago, I was talking to uh, some of my friends on PlayStation. Matt, what do you want out of the PS5? 1080, 60 standard. I think 1080, 60 standard is what they need to shoot for. I think if they really want to go for it, 1080, 120. Well, also, we've also already hit the, uh, the, the mid-generation upgrade, right? Where you get the base model, and then if you wait two years, you can get the Pro or the Elite or the whatever. So shoot for it in two years. Get your hardware sorted out. Get your software sorted out. Try again in two years. Oh, all of a sudden, this new chipset came out that allows us to really upgrade without a lot of performance costs. Okay, cool. Well, now you slap a $400 sticker on it, and bam, you got a two-year console. Done deal. So what do you guys think down below? Let us know. Are they really going to use bigger picture and sacrifice image quality? What do you think is going on with the 4K60 race? Because these are kind of our thoughts, and we're a little concerned about it because we've seen some damn good 1080. Have you seen damn good 1080? Or have you seen... I'll have at this point. You know, but... dammer good, you know, 4K. Dammer gooder. Dammer Gooder, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Have you seen Dammer Gooder 4K? Let us know down in the comments below. And don't forget to go down below and hit that subscribe button, ring that notification bell, because we want to know what you guys think. And if we're wrong, and if we are dead wrong, and if we are Dammer Gooder wrong, we'll do a video and we will retract it because we want to make sure that our information changes with the information you guys give us. So yes. let us know what it you guys think. It will be verified, though. Yeah, exactly. Let us know what you think down below. And don't forget to join us next time right here on a drink with crazy and until next time everybody cheers cheers guys thank you for watching a drink with crazy if you liked the conversation make sure to click here to see more